So I'm going to talk to you a little bit about how uh, an EPA, US EPA, emergency responder, spill responder, uh, became a microplastics expert and really EPA's uh, answer to uh, microplastic pollution in terms of research and, and effort. Uh, it kind of stems from how we respond to emergencies and how we use RGIS services. Uh, and I'm just going to give you, instead of slides, just images from my, uh, my book of um, uh, GeoViewers, storyboards, uh, story maps, excuse me, uh, to sort of tell you the story. I keep calling them storyboards, but they're story maps, right? These are maps. Yeah. Uh, so uh, I'm on uh, a GeoViewer pretty much all the time as an emergency responder. Uh, so we get calls 24-7 uh, from the National Response Center and the California State Warning Center about spills or, or, or complaints about an environmental uh, problem. So I take those calls. Sometimes they're at night. We get up, we look them up on the map. We have uh, ArcGIS Collector, typically on my phone. I can open up Collector. And I can look at layers such as uh, you know, fuel pipelines. Uh, I can look at the relationship to endangered species habitats, essential fish habitat. Uh, if it, in the case of water, uh, we, we take all sorts of calls. Uh, sunken wrecks, mercury spills in homes or schools, uh, large oil spills, pipeline breaks. Uh, we prepare for uh, typhoons uh, that are coming. This is my uh, screenshot from Monday night when I was preparing to talk. This is apparently Typhoon Javier, which is heading toward uh, you know, Guam, which is part of our jurisdiction. And so we're, we're, we're preparing for these things all the time and trying to figure out what's the best response we can do. How this relates to microplastic and plastic pollution, I'll get to. Uh, but you can imagine uh, a plastics crisis where plastic debris, especially, is entering water bodies all the time as the world's largest oil spill, continuing oil spill. That's, that's what we call it. And that's kind of gotten EPA's interest, and that's why I'm allowed to work on it kind of uh, thing. It's kind of interesting that that's happened even in today's... Uh, environmental climate. So these storyboards, uh, story maps, excuse me, <laughs> and geo viewers collected, these have put me on this track to understand the interaction between shoreline pollution and ocean impacts. Okay, so a lot of the cases we have uh, deal with this uh, shoreline pollution sources and impacts to communities, uh, you know, adjacent habitat on land, certainly marine and estuarine habitat and freshwater habitat. So this is a uh, geo viewer on the EPA geo platform. It's got on it a data set of uh, all the chemical storage and oil storage facilities on Guam. That's the Opera Harbor there, this thing, where most of the uh, shipping happens. By the way, there's like some 70 sunken wrecks in this harbor that we've been evaluating for PCB contamination and other things. Uh, and then we've got some endangered, or at least some uh, aquatic habitat mapped. All along. So some of these facilities, uh, they have accidents, they have spills, they're inspected by Guam EPA, they're inspected by US EPA. Uh, some of them are drinking water facilities, have chlorine. Um, so when we're preparing uh, for an event or we have some kind of emergent situation, we look to these data sets. I, I'll just point out, this, this data layer is kind of cute. It's called Walters. Walter is the name of the guy who is the director of Guam EPA. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to be him with him next week in Guam, so it's convenient that I'm showing you this. Uh, so he called me up one afternoon and said, hey, the Cabras oil storage uh, at the power plant has been compromised, and the oil is leaking into containment. It's going to go into the bay. So that's the time I can pull up this kind of map. And because we've been out there, we actually use Collector to map some of the endangered um, species habitat. This is a turtle nesting site here. There's the map. Uh, and then put in where we'd like to put, you know, oil spill prevention booming, you know, in advance. We went out and trained the Coast Guard, Guam EPA, local citizens on how to do this. And we selected the sites with them in Collector and built the application. So now at home I can just call Guam and say, okay, uh, get out your iPad because we have all this stuff mapped in Collector. You can go right to it. So this is the kind of thing we use. And as these typhoons bear on Guam or on Saipan as they did two, three weeks ago, uh, we can sort of triage and figure out what's going on. We do the same thing in California. I won't uh, go into that in this talk, but 
we've got all the hazardous materials facilities mapped in California, everything from a pool or nail salon where they handle small amounts of hazardous waste, all the way up to the nuclear power plant. So everything in there is mapped uh, on uh, GeoViewers. We can pull it up, we can go to those places, and we can estimate in the advance of a disaster you know, what might be there, what might be compromised. And then we go out with Collector and we actually collect information on that stuff. So that just points out, you pull up this extent and you can get information on the habitat type, what to do, how much equipment to use, where to get it. So um, this kind of concept of the world's largest oil spill, microplastics uh, waste got out there. Uh, I got asked to look into it because I look at all kinds of pollution problems at EPA. Uh, we pulled up this map, uh, which was provided to us by NOAA, which is marine debris cleanup sites on uh, the French frigate shoals, which there they are. They're out in the middle of the Hawaiian Island National Monument chain. It's been in the news. It's the Papahana Omukuakea Marine National Monument. It's uh, co-owned by, co-managed by NOAA and U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service. Great sea turtle. Uh, you did? Did you live on East Island? East or Turn? East is the one that disappeared a couple of weeks ago. You saw this in the news. I was there a couple, about a month ago. So yeah, quite a lot of marine debris cleaned up that's been mapped. This is our story map, finally got it right, uh, for Turn Island, okay, for the French Frigate Shoals. So we, we put stuff out there about this when we were trying to get involved, and we were uh, sued by the Center for Biological Diversity. They said EPA Superfund should list all of the plastic garbage in uh, the Pacific Ocean as a Superfund site. So we were actually sued by the Center for Biological Diversity. This is probably 2009 or so. And we said, hey, we'll investigate that. Send us out. We'll take a look at it. Same time, Fish and Wildlife asked us to evaluate Turn Island as a pollution site. Because uh, there has been a lot of historic pollution there. It's very typical of EPA to do that. So this is our story map, which you can see. It's got a lot of different stuff that's happened on Turn Island. <laughs> it's so funny that you've been there. <laughs> because it's so hard to get to. It's a three-day boat ride. All right. Uh, under, under interesting conditions. Um, but yeah, so it was, uh, Turn Island is the one island there that they expect to withstand sea level rise. So it's very important to Fish and Wildlife Service and to um, NOAA as a sea turtle nesting site, covered with plastic, in addition to having pollution sources. And we figured out, you know, it's possible that all the sea life there is exposed to these contaminants through the ingestion of plastic, not just through the environmental contaminants. So we took a look out there. This is a bolus from a frigate bird. It's loaded with plastic. Really quite easy to find. There's one of your sea turtles uh, from this island. So we took quite a lot of PCB samples on the island. But also we decided to investigate the monk seals open ocean habitat. Uh, this is the most endangered marine species. Most of them live there. So we took uh, base layers from NOAA on habitat bottom type. We took physical parameters, uh, you know, conductivity, uh, for example, and we selected randomized locations for plastic particle sampling. And so you'll see uh, that data coming out soon. Get a sense of what's the plastic particle load that animals might be ex exposed to in addition to the classic EPA contaminants, uh, PCBs and stuff like that on the island. So we're really interested in how to use map services to understand waste loss, habitat impacts, um, and other kinds of pollution interactions. Uh, I'm often called to a response. What's been so great is that I've been exposed to map services from all over the place. Uh, indigenous fishing zones, to central fish habitat, to animal tracks from folks like Mbari. Uh, and so when we have an event, I say, let's get some of those map services in so we can start making different decisions that maybe we would have made otherwise. In addition to that, EPA generates a lot of data. All right, we have existing data from plants, water treatment plant, for example, but we also collect monitoring data, like oil spill monitoring data. So we bring those two things together, you've got all sorts of new information. So actual pollution monitoring data go along with bathymetry, habitat bottom, that kind of thing, whether it's samples or, or sensors. And we bring that stuff together, and we have new information. And couple that with uh, aerial imagery, we really have a much better sense of waste loss, how much, where it is, what the impacts are. Um, and so that's basically my talk. You know, uh, we are right now on Saipan. My team went to Saipan uh, to 
to respond to, uh, this is called Typhoon U2. Uh, so we were there on Saipan. Uh, the typhoon happened on the 24th. Digital Globe gave us this image from the 28th of October. So we can see massive devastation of uh, much of Saipan. And it gives you a sense of, you know, what kind of damage, how much, what's lost. You know, I responded to Fukushima. You know, I worked with California communities on impacts from Fukushima uh, and other oil spills and things like that. And giving people this kind of sense of what the interaction between pollution is and their space is really key. So I feel like with um, plastic pollution, this is going to be a really good opportunity. Yeah. Thank you.